us so we don't have to move. That's going to be really strong. Now, they might attack first, and that'll suck because the Craig will take some extra damage. Womp womp. Um, but maybe we can get some kills off with the Spell Weaver or something like that. The Scoundrel... Um, the Scoundrel could... You do have a... Don't you have a loot as well? I might have used it for... Oh, there we go. It does... If this loots everything within a range of two. It does burn itself, though. But it might not be a terrible idea. I mean, first of all, I should I should think about killing this bandit guard before it goes. So we'd like a very short initiative to kill the bandit guard. Um, instead of using the loot to... I could do this and this. I could just use the bottom of throwing knives just to move without burning it. We'd only pick up one loot pile. Um, yeah, wow, the uh, Craghart's going to loot four loot piles, assuming he kills these guys. That's crazy. Um... Yeah, I don't want to single out right now. Like the bottom single out is uh, is pretty nice. Adjacent to any of your allies, um, but we don't want to burn it on this guy. Maybe what I'll do is I'll just go and use the smoke bomb right now because I don't think I mean we might want to set up for some visibility stuff in the next room, but maybe I'll just do this. And we're just going to use this for movement to just go and sit on the gold, and that's going to be okay. Attack two, move two, do attack first. Um, you mean the quick hands? We've already used that, uh, Umbrasso. Although it would be quite nice, because we would get to get a little bit more value, potentially. Mm -hmm. Well, there's always a lot of planning in here, and I've got to run multiple characters. So you do you do have to think a little bit. Yeah, I don't think if you went if you went too fast, it would be bad. Um, oh, we don't actually have to pick over here. This might be a good time to load the frost armor. Just play the bottom of frost armor, and um, this one's within range, but actually no, no one's in range for that attack. I could do the reviving ether. I'd like to use it as late as possible, though. I guess I can just use a move. Uh, no, I've got to play the top of something else if I want to load the frost armor. Maybe I don't load the frost armor right now. Maybe what we do is we... I could even use this, because we can do a rest to grab our discards again. So reviving either is just going to be discarded. That's going to be okay. And then I can prep the frost, the, the attack of the frost armor to kill something that ne might need to be killed. We'll go as late as possible to do some cleanup. I could rest now, but the thing is rest uh, actually burns one of your cards as well. I don't know if it needs to do that. I think resting next turn might be better. Yeah, I use, I use the top ability to, to just ignore things all the time. But it is only melee, which we don't want. I think I'm just going to do this. Okay, he's going to strengthen himself so he does more damage later on, but theoretically everything's going to be dead before that happens. So... Um, we just have to use a basic attack, but we can use this, even though it's not going to get benefits from it, but this way, even if we draw minus two, we'll still kill him. There we are. And then we're just using a normal move over here, and we're going to go and stand on the gold. And we'll skip the rest of the movement. End our turn. So it's at the end of the turn that it actually picks up the money. All right. Avalanche. Now, be careful when you target these because of the way that it works. One of these tiles is like the one you click on. So if I if I do this, for example, it's only going to hit this guy and then swing at this empty square. So if I do this, it, you can see it's got the attack on both. So I want to attack this one over here. I do want to make sure I consume Earth. Uh, not for the extra damage because the damage is going to be overkill regardless. It is going to burn the card for a lot of damage. Huh, is this overkill? I mean, yes, it is. Oh, yeah, it can totally rotate. Um, oh, can you rotate the targets? I don't know. Maybe. It does burn the card. It will kill them both and give me, you know, it'll give me two experience. Should I just do a normal attack here instead? Oh, R to rotate the uh, the thingy. Yeah. I mean, it doesn't matter here, but it will matter for some. This one might actually be rotatable. I mean, if I don't kill them both right now, they will attack me. So we'll take hit point damage. Um, on the other hand, you know, we'll take the one attack and then 
The Spellweaver will be able to move over here and just melee the other to death. Yeah, they're going to die regardless. The only thing is we'll take one attack. Avalanche is so good, I don't know if I want to burn it right now. We, I mean, we're going to want to burn it eventually to get the perk points. I think we just do a one attack. Oh, you're right. Killing both lets us do a really efficient loot all. That was part of the idea. Okay, this is going to be overkill. I still want to consume this for the extra XP. Ain't no kill like overkill. Uh, and then loot all. Good. Uh, now how are we feeling deck wise? Yeah, I don't think we want to rest right now. So I'm actually am thinking we might use one of our potion. Although we've got an equal number of things, so never mind. We can uh, we can use our stamina potion later on. So we get a burn curve sometimes, but we have two extra rooms to clear. Now, I could pop up in the next room right now. The problem is all the enemies in here will get to take their turn, which is kind of bad. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the bottom of this. I'll just do the empty swing and the reviving ether to not um, to not consume anything. It is going to be worth setting this up. And then we can recover it with a proper reviving ether later on. So we're going to set up. And then, yeah, I'm not going to use the, the actual text for reviving ether. I will just use it for an attack too, where I skip attack and end our turn. Yeah, I have played the physical board game. Yeah. Okay. So I think what we're going to do, everyone's got enough cards to do. Uh, no, you'll be fine because we can use a stamina potion to recover a card as well. So everyone's got enough cards to play two more turns. Same thing over here. We can use a stamina potion. Actually, you only get enough cards for one, but that's probably not going to be the end of the world. So yeah, with the scoundrel, the hope is to pick up this gold, but we might just have to go into the next room because most likely what happens here is we pop this, because we can't spend too much time, because every time, every turn you're consuming some of your cards, they go away quite quickly. I think we use the backup ammunition to move into the room, and then maybe just crater to shoot someone from range. Or Earth and Claude, which has even more range. It is a pretty long room. Yeah. I think what's going to happen is we're going to Earth and Claude plus backup. We'll move using the backup ammunition, or I could set up the backup ammunition and just heal this round. Ooh, that might be better. Yeah, time is much more critical than we initially. Because the thing is, every round you spend, you lose, you're lose. you losing cards. It's much more common to have your characters get exhausted from running out of cards and health. It's very misleading. Yeah, use the backup ammunition exactly. I think that's what's going to happen. I let the rogue open the door. Um, we'll, do, we'll go as late as possible because we might... Well, we're pretty much just healing ourselves, so it doesn't actually matter. Or the rogue. So we'll do that. The rogue. Oh, he can't go. He can't go invisible right now. Unless, can I use this right now? No, it's during our turn. Yeah, I can't smoke bomb to invis open the door. But setting up the backup ammunition would be really nice. We could set up the singled out as well for some big attacks and, and then rest. I mean, this could just be a big setup round. On the other hand, we do have throwing knives here, which don't, doesn't even burn itself and hits a lot of things. A rogue would be in bad shape, though. We have our frost armor running here. The, our spell weaver could actually tank some hits. We could use, like, flame strike, ride the wind. Ride the wind moves up to eight. We could run into the room. It does burn itself, but we're probably going to reviving ether like very very shortly. Um, we could run into the room, flame strike. Craigheart could fire through the door probably with the range of earth and clawed. Yeah, we're going to have to rest next turn with the uh, spell. We're going to do a short rest. 
And then what we probably do then is throwing knives. I guess I can use the bottom of backstab. It moves quite quickly. I can actually open the door with the scoundrel. Um, eh. I really don't want the scoundrel to be in there without defense. I want to kind of maybe open the door over here. Although I could open the door and then run back. That's always a possibility. But I'd have to do it all in one action. All this is pretty bad. Guess we can do this. I can go late with the rogue. Use the bottom of backstab to move in, stab someone with single out, and then um, short. Or then I can stamina potion, and next round we can move back out. Yeah, we'll try something like this. What could possibly go wrong? We could all die, but hey, at least we get a little bit of XP out of it. Okay, so we're gonna move to here with Ride the Wind. See what the door looks like. So we have ourselves a Bandit Guard Elite up here. And then in the back, we have three archers, one of which is an elite. We don't... Uh, well, we do know where they're going to go, actually. They're going to go on 56s. And they're going to do um, a range attack, range 5 with two targets. Now, if we move out of the way... Cause this, this doesn't have a move. We can actually deprive them of targets this round. That actually might end up paying off. Yeah, this one's elite. And this one's elite. This one's not an archer. Well, this one's going to move, actually. Um, oh, he's going to move very quickly. Oh, no, he's just going to stand still. He's going to shield himself and then try to melee attack for poison. Okay, the archers don't move. They have attacked a range of five. One, two, three, four, five. And this guy's not going to move. And he's gonna if I just stand here, no one's going to be able to hit me. And yeah, there's a trap. There's a couple of traps, and archers can place traps. Two damage. So he's going to go. He's going to shield and then try to melee attack, but there's no one to melee attack. All right. Yeah, we're going to set up our backup ammunition. Although, now that this guy, well, he's heavily shielded. I was going to say, we could run up and melee this guy, but he's not going to take do much. Yeah, no, we're going to do this. And then we're going to drop a heal. Um, do we drop it on ourselves, or do we drop it on the scoundrel? I think we drop it on ourselves, and the idea is still going we're going to put ourselves in a position where we're going to take damage. So now the archers are going to try to attack, and they can't. Because there's nothing in range, and they don't have a move. <laughs> Sing life. Attack one, game one, target is adjacent to any of your allies. See, if I had ended up the Spellweaver here, this single out would have done a ton of bonus damage. Um, but he's still heavily shielded, so it doesn't seem great. I could set up the single out here, but I don't think that's the way to go. I think we are going to move, and we are going to attack him. There's very unlikely we're going to do much damage, but we're going to give it a try. I'm going to move, uh, I don't know, here. Because he is shielded, so he is going to take reduced damage. But you never know. Minus one. So he literally takes zero. Womp womp. So here, I'm definitely using the stamina potion. So that I can do things next turn. And I think we're going to bring our smoke potion up. So do I confirm that I want to use it? Yeah. I'm going to bring the smoke bomb. So we can turn and viz and do some shenanigans and use one of our like super quadratic damage attacks. Actually, can I, what's left in hand? Smoke bomb is the top. So probably what I'll do is I'll smoke bomb and then just use the bottom of throwing knives to move a little bit. And then we can uh, draw, we can, we can rest to recycle our hand and just set up a big damage attack. And we can't attack things that are invisible. Uh, 
All right, new round. Now, it's worth noting that the archers and the elite archers, they draw the exact same card. The elite archer has slightly higher base damage and slightly higher base range and more hit points as well. Uh, but they play the same card. Okay. Um, the shield on the bandit guard elite is gone, but they have an innate shield. The bandit guard elite always has one point of shield no matter what. But the shield from the ability they set up is gone. Um, I think we need to move up and attack him. So I'll probably use the bottom opposing strike to move up and then the top of crater to attack. Now it's not going to be terribly speedy here, but so we'll see what happens. Now the scoundrel, yeah, I know I'm going to want to use the smoke bomb throwing knives and yeah, we'll use the shorter initiative. That's going to be okay. Oh, crater's ranged. Oh, it is ranged. So I can... Okay, that's fine, because I can range him from here and then move up. But yeah, good, good call. Good catch. And doesn't get consumed. No, good. Excellent. So with the Spellweaver... Okay, so here's the difference between the rests. Both the long and the short rest recover all the cards in your discard pile, except one. With the long rest, you choose one of them to burn forever. With the short rest, it randomly picks one to burn forever. If you don't want to burn that one, you can take one point of damage for it to redraw. We cannot afford to have the reviving ether burned, um, but I think I want a short rest rather than long. Uh, one of the benefits, so the benefit to long rest is it also heals you two hit points, but it costs you your entire round. Short rest, you can still act this round. So long rest, you get to pick what card is burned and you heal. Short rest, it's random, you don't heal, but you still get to act. I think I'm proposing I'm going to short rest, and then if it hits Reviving Aether, um, I will have to take a point of damage to shrug that off. So it's Flame Strike. I will let that get burned, because we're going to be bringing it back with things. So, we might want to Reviving Aether this turn. Um, I don't know if I... So I'm going to want to use the top of Reviving Aether. If I f use, say, the bottom of Freezing Nova and it burns, I don't know if it gets restored from Reviving Aether. I don't think it does. I don't think it does. It would be really nice if we did have the Stamina Potion because we'd be able to bring one thing back, take a, take a full action with something other than Reviving Aether. And yeah, Reviving Aether doesn't get your items, no, just your cards. But I'm just not sure if it brings back Freezing Nova. Because it would be nice to Freezing Nova to heal Reviving Aether and get it back. You think it does? Okay, we'll give that a try. Although, we do have an element to consume for Mana Bolt. We could do this. Oh, shit, no, hold on. We have to use the top of Reviving Aether, so Mana Bolt would give us a heal, but I will fro Freezing Nova. Yeah, and that's the thing. I, you, we can't, I don't think it's going to get back our Frost Armor. You're right. Because it's still active and not burned right now. So Reviving Aether won't recycle Frost Armor. Um, could we delay it? We could make our turn be Mana Bolt Freezing Nova. Short Rest again next turn. Yeah, maybe we just do that. I can deactivate it to burn it. Let's Mana Bolt Freezing Nova. Short Rest next turn. Since whatever we short rest that gets burned, we're going to get back with arriving ether anyway. Yeah, I like it. Um, timing, I think, is going to be pretty much the same. I'm not going to act after the uh, after Craig, so we're not going to have line of sight for heal, but I can at least heal the rogue, assuming I go before him, which I will. So we're going to do this. Okay. So the elites are going to move one step and then do a, range, a single range attack. The guard is going to move and attack. They're all pretty slow. Craighart's going to go after the archers, but I don't think that matters much. Now, the archers should be able to move one. Actually, I don't think they're going to be able to hit anyone again, because the rogue's going to be invisible, and Spellweaver's going to be out of range. This guy's going to move up one. One, two, three, four, five. <laughs> We're still not taking any damage. Crazy. So yeah, I'm going to Mana Bolt this guy. Uh, 
Oh, yeah, I can burn the frost armor on the turn itself. But if it hasn't been consumed at all, there's almost no point in uh, in burning it to recycle it, because who cares? Another minus one draw. Jeez, we're having a hard time killing this um, bandit guard. It sucks because he's got the shield, so we really have to do big damages. I'm going to use this, and I may as well heal, since we're going to get this back next turn anyway. So, Hachacha, smoke bomb. And then we're just going to do a move here towards these archers. I have, I have two cards in my discard pile. I can I can totally rest with the uh, the Spellweaver. <gasps> no, I burned it. You're right. I, I, uh, can I burn the, fro the Frost Armor at any time? Maybe I can burn it during my setup, and then I can rest and recover it that way. Well, we'll find out. What's this guy going to do? I think he's going to do a move and attack, right? So we'll put Craigie in here. Although, uh, too bad I can't undo at this point. Because if she's going to die, she should have just taken the damage at the time. Um, recovering just one card with the stamina potion doesn't make any sense. So we'll just end the turn. Yeah, let's take the three. No, she's exhausted right away. Oh, damn! Mistakes were made! Well, learned a thing. I thought, like, no, no, no. Surely we'll be okay there to do the uh, refresh. But I guess it should have burned. You can restart the round? Really? Oh, that's quite good. Because it is one of the things where if you're playing at the board game, you'd be like, oh, hold on, wait. Uh, oh, no, it's too late. We would have had to restart sooner than this, before that, because it's at the start of the round that she dies. So, nope. Done regardless. Do I want a long rest here? No, I don't think so. I think we're going to short rest. So we can take an action here. Okay, let's figure out things. Um, same thing, short rest. Venom Shiv. It is quite nice. But I think I'm... Well, this none, neither the top or the bottom gets burned on that. But we don't want to lose the super crazy backstab. I can't decide if I want to burn this or not. I don't think I do. I mean, that's a single crazy backstab, but I guess it's going to have to be fine enough. Flanking strike. We want to use... Um, yeah, I want to use the backstab. And we're going to kill this guy. We're going to turn around and kill this elite with the backstab. So we want to use pretty much anything for the movement here. And ideally, it'd be nice if we could end up where, the, where we're not taking damage. Because we're going to do, like, super huge... Quadruple crazy ass damage here. We can even set up the poison with a special mixture. I don't think that's going to be required though. I wonder, do I want to go up and super crazy ass backstab the archer? And I know we need to clear the uh, the trap as well. Maybe I want to super crazy ass backstab the archer. So I kind of like this idea. We'll use the special mixture. It'll move up poison. I don't think invisibility. I think invisibility gets broken by an actual attack, right? <laughs> 